Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for The Upside, our new virtual conversation series where we explore how a major crisis can reorder society for better or for worse and how we as a community can harness the better. Um, my name is Kat DeHaan. I am a co-founder of The Fourth Floor alongside our founder, Breen Sullivan, and co-founder, Sarah Feingold, who's on the call with us today. I believe we're all, oh no, she, uh, just Sarah is. Um, for those of you not familiar, The Fourth Floor is a female-focused entrepreneurial ecosystem that facilitates advisory board opportunities between startups and general counsel and industry leaders who are looking to start their board careers. Um, today, we're excited to talk to Didi Chan, co-founder of Future Proof Retail and one of our members about how she, as a founder, um, is maneuvering through this current crisis. Um, by the way, we'll have a Q&A at the end, but please feel free to ask questions. Um, hello, Didi. Hi. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about Future Proof Retail, and how you came to be a co-founder? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so I met my partner in a philosophy club. We bonded over the value of time. So on a macro level, we want to maximize human potential by removing frictions in time. And I love shopping, but I hate waiting in line. And it really started from a trip with my partner when I wanted to buy a bottle of water and there was a really long line and we were late for the airport. Um, and at that point, uh, he said he can make an app to solve it. I asked him to prove it. So, and that's how we got started. <laughs> We've been working on- A great um, proof of checkout. concept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. Um, you've had a very personal and probably much longer history with COVID-19 than most of us. Um, can you please share a little bit about your story? Yeah, so, um, January 23rd is a few days before Chinese New Year is when uh, Wuhan, China was a place of 11 million people was on lockdown was the first time this kind of happened. And I remember saw, seeing that news and being like, this is unprecedented. Um, this is kind of nervous, but I, I don't know anyone in Wuhan. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's in that area. And I think a week later, like all of Hubei, like 50 plus million people was on lockdown. And at that time, I was nervous of like, oh, a virus is spreading. This is, um, and they're taking drastic measure to try to protect it. And I think they're doing a really good job. Um, you know, of course, I worry for my friends and family in the East, that's in Hong Kong, that's in different parts of China and different parts of Asia. Uh, and everybody's celebrating the Lunar New Year. And within a month, like all of my friends and family in the East are like in some sort of social distance, lockdown culture. And I was freaking out because um, my friends and family are experienced this thing that we're all now experiencing too. Um, and I think at that point, I realized how serious it is because it just hasn't really happened in history. And um, or how by serious is how easily spreadable this disease is and how it's, it's a community. It's like it impacts, it's everybody has to work together to fight it. You know, like I used to play the board game Pandemic. Might not want to play it now, but like it's really, it's a fun board game because it's not, competitive is not one person against another is a community is everybody working together to fight against a virus. Um, so I think I've been stressed about it since January and then kind of just been really obsessively watching the news and see different places being responding and doing and try my best to uh, balance not being too negative and not spreading too much anxiety, but at the same time, trying to prepare, knowing like something's happening, accept it as fast as possible and try to prepare and try to be future proof, not just in work, but like in life as well. Great. Um, we're sending good thoughts to your family and friends. I hope they're all doing okay. Um, so given this situation, what is your current business strategy to manage through this crisis and how does that include paying it forward? Yeah, so we make mobile checkouts. So you use your phone, you scan, you pay, 
on your phone and you check out and you, you skip checkout lines. And we've been doing this for seven last seven years. Um, and one thing we noticed when kind of COVID came to New York, uh, one of our, our client, Fairway Market, uh, had a huge uptake in user. And we realized they were promoting mobile checkout as part of their shopper safety uh, solution. And it's a really, really, not just a fast solution to get you out of line, so you're not staying there um, as long, but it's also a very hygienic solution because you're not interacting with other people touching your food and you're only using your phone. So, and it's an easier way to maintain social distance. So it really helped both the staff and the shoppers in the store. So at that point, we realized this is really useful and, um, and this is really needed for all of the essential um, solution out there because this can really help. So what we did was we decided we were gonna make our solution um, simplify it, make it easy to roll out, and we are donating it to grocery stores, pharmacies, and convenience stores. Um, that way we can contribute at this time. And there's no catch, there's no commitment. You don't need long-term contract. You know, we, you have it, it's free. We'll help you on board by order, and we work with you through it. And there's, you know, yeah, at the end of this, you don't want it. You don't need to work with us. It's not like a gimmick or anything like that. It's just, hey, here's a solution that work, and we have experience with it. We have good results with it, and this is something that can really implement and help um, during this time. It's really generous of you um, and very admirable. Do you guys then also have a plan for when the crisis ends, or is that something that's still evolving? Yeah, I mean, we then we're live on like business wise we're live on three continent five retail verticals we're the leader in um scan and go space uh we're the only company that's trans like our pricing everything is transparent so we have a good group of clients that's really happy with us that's talking about a solution to the press and are happy to be reference clients so business wise like without covid much we are still have a nice healthy pipeline of people that we're planning on working with and keep on rolling out. So um, we're just gonna wanna go back to business as usual as fast as possible. You mentioned in a prior conversation about a paradigm shift um, and kind of planning on where, wh where and when the future will come. Um, I loved your thoughts on that. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that paradigm shift you were mentioning? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, so. We name our company Future Proof because we always, you know, the, we're we're a technology provider. We're not, and the way we've seen technology uh, in for for the retail space have a lot of time, been times when you get this nice technology and it start to depreciate and it doesn't grow or scale with the future because time keep going by faster and faster. Um, and the paradigm shift I was talking about is I think, you know, every generation does new things that's coming in and it takes a while before it becomes normal. Um, so for example, online shopping, that's a big deal. And the reason we hit mobile, the original pitch was as popular, as wonderful as online shopping is, uh, majority of the transaction is still happening in person because there is something unique about that physical experience that I'm sure we're gonna miss after this. Um, this is because you know going to the store is something wonderful about you know seeing people and doing that. Right. And but you know now that we have mobile technologies like and there's a lot of benefit of online like you have really good convenience you have really good personalization. Like if I want to look for something, it's like I can't, someone or the computer would tell me exactly what I want, where, and I don't have to spend a lot of time digging through it. There's very little anxiety and they can customize it to my preference exactly. So it's some of these things that makes online shopping so fun, um, it's coming into the offline store. But to merge the online offline world, there it takes, it, it takes a while until people finally have that smooth experience. And the way 
in our space, the way we see it is that that merger is a mobile because it's still interactive. It's on the phone. So you still have that connection. And the way I see it is the difference between you pick up your phone and you, you call someone. Well, now we don't just call people, we text, we schedule, and then we call someone. So that mobile is like that texting, that communication. Now, if you're shopping with your phone, you can have both the physical experience, you can have that shopping experience, you can have the personal service, but you can also have the convenience. And then you can have like a customized piece on your in your hand at the moment you want instantly so we can actually bring the best of online and adapt it to the offline space so um yeah interesting um so there's a lot of pressure on founders um it can be very isolating and stressful especially at this time are there any tips that you could share with coping um with that um personally aside from business yeah a few things that work for me um i use Sano app uh, and to chat and because they have this feature I really love, uh, especially to talk about COVID and news. Um, and the feature is you can delete all of the chat in like a day or a week or however long. And I use that specifically for COVID talk um, because, you know, you have to talk about it because it's what's happening around but then I want it to be a clean slate. So you can complain, you can share, but at the end of the day, it clears up. So I think for founders, you know, we're, we're taking in a lot of different things and it's really important to accept reality as fast as possible and adapt to reality and get ahead of it. And in order to do that, you have to be able to let go. There's a lot of things that's happening just, you know, with work, with personal, with friends, with family, um, and you, all of that you have to navigate. And I think it's really, really important for that mental health. And I think if you have to talk about it, which is completely legit, like find a way to let it flow through. Yeah. I heard you also keep a mood diary. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, I've been- I love I, the idea. <laughs> yeah, well, it's copied from Reddit. <laughs> Um, so I've been keeping a mood diary every day uh, this year. So at the end of the day, I give myself a mood. Is it, you know, range from terrible all the way to like super fantastic, awesome day. And in between you have anxious, depressed, sad, or whatever. And every day I just kind of give a mood of the day. And um, it's interesting because we're in April now, so several months of data. And what's great about that is when I feel really, really sad, I know it's like, I see a pattern. I know it's a few days and then it'll be done. Or when I'm really, really happy, like I don't have to fear that it won't come back. I know it'll come back again. Um, so kind of having that consistency, it just, it, it, allow you, it allows me to enjoy the moment a lot more and not um, worried so much and miss that moment. So it kind of, it shows that things ebb and flow and that it, it'll always change. And yes. Back. That's great. Good advice. Um, so to new founders or, or founders that have just recently started their businesses, do you have any tips or thoughts for them on how to think or start on their journey um, given this time? Yeah, I think um, trust yourself for one, like if you have this idea and and don't ask for generic advice, like this bunch of people with new founders that, you know, they're gonna, one of the thing is because you're new, you're inexperienced, there's a bunch of experienced people that's gonna say you need their experience to help you grow your business and you're gonna get lost um, because it's generic strategic advice or something like that. Um, if you have a business idea and if there's something you can do to make a difference, to add value, which is what wakes you up, which is what makes you want to do this thing. And the way most efficiently, I think, to get to your goal is to uh, figure out the specific problem and then find that specific advisor with that specific skill and ask that question. You're gonna, if you know the right question, you're going to get the answer just like that. And if you just have a generic give me advice question, you're going to be lost uh, and you're going to be wasting a lot of time 
and you're not going to be able to concentrate on your work. And if you ask like five amazing expert generic advice, you're probably going to get five different advice and it's not going to be applicable to exactly what you're doing. So I think if you just narrow that focus, figure out exactly what you need, it's going to be a lot easier and you won't be as distracted and you save a lot more money. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so true. So trust yourself, believe in yourself, and then find the people that can give you the, the, the good advice um, and know specifically what you want to ask for. Um, that's great. Um, before we open up to q and I just want to do a little housekeeping. Um, follow us on LinkedIn or like our posts and share them if you can. Join our mailing list and apply as a member. It's free for now. You can do that on our website. Members, members, remember you can stay connected through our Google group directory and ask to be connected in the room, our online board seat exchange. Um, we're also looking for more sponsors, so appreciate any connections there. And we have a great, um, we have some great upcoming events that are listed on our website, including Happy Hour this Friday at 4 p.m. They're always really fun, um, and a webcast on employment law issues during these uncertain times on April 7th at 3 p.m., hosted by Greenwald Doherty. Um, and now I'd like to open up for questions. Anybody have a question? Go ahead. I have a, I have a question. Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Didi. Thank you. This is really, really interesting. Um, has any of your perspectives on your company changed because of COVID or are you going to change up like your goals with your company? Um, no, no. I want to say not so much besides like the specific, like, uh, I think our company, my company is a really good group of teammates and friends that work really, really well together. Um, and there's a lot of trust. Like we've been working from home, you can work whenever you want already. So there's a lot of things that we've been doing that fits with the Kobe culture. Um, and I'm really appreciative of it because I think I, I wouldn't be here without everybody on the team that's really working together beyond that. Um, I think it, I think the one thing that makes me, it just made me pause and think and be more appreciative. Um, and I think we'll just keep doing what we're doing and go forth. <laughs> Great. Thank you. That, that's interesting. Um, I was wondering if you could dial back time, is there anything you would do differently to prepare for the crisis, either for work or yourself? I think, well, it's a tough one. <laughs> if, yeah, if I could be less, if I could communicate better, I, if I could be less anxious, um, I wanted, you know, I looked like a mad woman for like a month trying to talk to a lot of people, convince them and help, like just try to prepare. But it's really hard because there's so many news and so many things that's like mix in and it's really hard for like, you don't think because we hasn't happened like a global pandemic in our lifetime. That's like not something easily conceived of, you know. Um, so I don't, if I could dial back time, I would try to recruit maybe more people early on is like, okay, what can we do to prepare or like maybe start thinking, okay, we know we're going to need masks, for example. Like we know, like it doesn't, you know, the doctors and the nurses, friends, I would call us like start buying masks for the hospitals or start having people like to send them there and um, coordinate a group that would learn to sew, make homemade masks for the neighborhood, for the building, for the community. It's like, okay, you, know, you don't want to use it right now, fine. Like you will in like a week or a month, like you're going to want it. So maybe start coordinating earlier a group of people that can take action because, you know, once you get past the shock of the situation, the best thing you can do is say, what can I give? What action can I take? And, um, you know, I'm doing that now, but like if I could do that sooner, that would be so much more helpful and like as this thing like every day matters time matters so i think um maybe spend less time 
being upset <laughs> and maybe like talk to an online therapist like sooner <laughs> so I can work through being upset and that way uh, start taking actions. Yeah, that, that would be great. I mean, I think that's a lesson that I hope we've all learned that it's better to, to be prepared and, and yeah, trust in what, what you might think is coming rather than trying to play catch up. Um, this has been great. Thank you so much, Dee Dee. This You're so inspirational and I'm sure you gave us all a ton to think about. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank, thank you. you.